Steamboat Geyser, the tallest geyser in the world, and it has been putting on a show the last few years with a record number of eruptions, 48 eruptions each in 2019 and 2020. But is it losing steam? It's only had eight eruptions so far in 2023, most recently just a few weeks ago on November 13th. Well, this is how Steamboat works. It goes through these periods of having really abundant activity, like in the 60s, in the 80s, and since 2018. But those can be separated by many, many years with few or even no eruptions at all. These really active times, though, allow us to learn quite a bit about the geyser system and how it works. For example, we put out seismometers all around Steamboat and neighboring Cistern Spring, about 300 or so feet away. Now, whenever Steamboat erupts, Cistern drains, like someone pulled the plug on a bathtub. Now, when we look at the sound that's created by all the boiling water beneath these features, we can see that the plumbing systems go quite deep, hundreds of feet. We didn't even see the connection between cistern and steamboat. But this may be one reason that steamboat's eruptions are so tall, that the plumbing system goes quite deep, much deeper than any other geyser system we know about in Yellowstone National Park. We've also been able to recover samples of wood that are embedded in the geyser deposits near Steamboat's vent. And by dating these pieces of wood, we can see that there was geyser activity going back four or 500 years at least. Now this tells us that Steamboat's much older than the suggestion from historical records that it might have formed in a very violent eruption in 1878. That's definitely not the case. We also can see that there are time periods when these trees were growing right on the rim of the vent. Well, that implies that Steamboat wasn't erupting at all during these periods. If you look at Steamboat today, it's surrounded by dead trees. They just can't survive getting coated with this hot silica mud-infused water all of the time. So Steamboat must have gone through periods of complete dormancy. And those periods seem to correlate with time periods of drought. So just like Old Faithful, Steamboat may sort of slow down when there's not that much water available in the subsurface and then come back to life during the periods of more abundant rainfall when there's more water in the subsurface. That's the story of Steamboat Geyser. Now let's talk about what's been going on in Yellowstone in terms of seismic and deformation activity over the past month. Yet another average month for seismicity in the Yellowstone region. University of Utah seismograph stations located 119 earthquakes during the month of November, and the largest was this magnitude 2.8 that occurred in the north central part of the park. Also a couple of swarms, that's also pretty normal. And as is usual, most of the seismicity occurred in this belt that extends from Hebgen Lake into the north central part of the park. In terms of ground deformation, also we're seeing a continuation of the usual patterns. This is two years of vertical deformation at the White Lake GPS station on the east side of the caldera. Each one of these blue dots is one day's worth of data. Downward trends are subsidence and upward trends are uplift. The overall caldera has been subsiding since 2015 by a rate of about two or three centimeters, about an inch or so per year. That's interrupted in the summertime by a pause or even a little bit of uplift as snow melt and runoff goes into the groundwater system and the ground sort of soaks it up like a sponge. And we can see the resumption here in October of the normal subsidence after the interruption in the summer of 2023. So no real changes in terms of overall caldera deformation. And finally, Steamboat. Here's the temperature record for Steamboat Geyser that shows the major eruption on November 13th after a series of minor eruptions. After that major, it dropped back down. We're just measuring air temperature because there are no more minor eruptions. Of course, quite cold, freezing. Before any future major eruption, we would expect to see more of these miners. So keep your eye out for that. Maybe we'll see some in early December, mid-December. That would mean that Steamboat is not quite done yet. Well, that's the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory update for December 1st, 2023. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to email us. Our address is yvowebteam, all one word, at usgs.gov. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next year in January of 2024. Bye-bye. Just want to let you know about the Sounds of Yellowstone playlist on the USGS YouTube channel. It's a great spot to actually listen to the geysers, hot springs, mud pots, and frying pans of Yellowstone National Park.